Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railway skills cast session and today we're covering the basics of adding buffer stops to your layout. Now these are an essential part of pretty much every railway scene from around the introduction of railways almost 200 years ago now onwards these have been an essential part of the scene protecting runaways protecting sidings and also prohibiting a lot of damage being carried out to rolling stock you'll find these fitted on the end of most sidings on the uk's railway network and across the world too in many different designs varying from very old-fashioned designs right through to the latest modern styles like we have here so i'll be running you through some of the different models we have available right now as usual, there's a link down there in the description to every single model that I cover here today and even more besides. These skills are applicable to almost any scale in model railways. We have these buffer stops available for N-Gage, double O, HO, O-Gage modelers and even more too. So feel free to head over to the website and find out more information on what we have available. We've also got a great range available for every budget too, and I'll be covering some of the lower budget items as well as some of the higher detailed, higher budget items available today too. So let's get started. Let's start with the most simple variation that we have. It's the humble Hornby buffer stop. Many of us will have had one of these as part of train sets we've received in the past, or maybe bought up a few for previous layouts too. They aren't the most hugely detailed items out there, but they do come in at a great price of under two pounds each, and you can get them in bulk packs as we see here on the screen. They are also one of the easiest buffer stops to fit onto your layout, and they can be detailed there too. You can paint them up or you can add any further detail. This is how they come. They come in the black finish that we have here, so it's already quite an authentic color for a buffer stop to blend in on the track on the end of your layout with the wood grain that you can just about see on the top of the buffer stop there too and this really couldn't be simpler to put onto your track by getting a track piece just putting it there you squeeze the ends very slightly and just make sure that they are clipped on the inside of the track and then just pull the ends out as per so and you'll now see that that is fully secure. We've pulled the ends out only by a couple of millimeters there, but you'll see that those clips are now on the outside of our rails. And you'll see that the clips at the end are on the inside of the rails. So that is very secure. It's got four locating points there now, and that is fully clipped in. You can see they're turning it on every angle that is not coming loose at all. That is now permanently in place on our piece of track. So you can choose to put these in. When you lay in your track, you can add them on afterwards. You can see that they clip in here. You may find it a little bit more tricky if you've put ballast down and if you have put further detail on your track. So this is something to do when you're laying your track after you've got your track down put your buffer stops on then and then build up the details such as the ballast, the weathering and the further track details around them there. But that really is the simplest, cheapest and easiest way to get buffer stops onto your layout. You'll find these on our website as Hornby code R083. And of course, you'll get them in a lot of Hornby's train sets there too. So that really is the simpler end of installing buffer stops. There's very similar models available that clip in in pretty much the same way as part of the gauge master range in N-Gage. And I'll just bring that up to the camera there for you so you can see that in a little more detail. These are product code GM53. And you can see more high definition photos of those on the website. But you can see again the four interior rails that will clip into the inside of the tracks on your layout there. So the clipping ones are really quite effective. There's no need to glue them. You don't need to add any further parts if you don't want to. You can, of course, paint them up, add a little bit of detail in, et cetera, et cetera. But otherwise, they're ready to go straight out of the packet and install onto your layout too. 
If you want something with a little bit more detail, you are starting to look at kits for most of the items, especially for steam era buffer stops, which, as you can see here in this O-Gage Pico model, were often built out of rail and often built out of spare parts that they had around. Some bespoke pieces, but you can see the rail style fish plates on the buffer stops here and the rails actually supporting the main buffer stop piece there too. So this is something that we have available in kit form. This is Pico's SL740 in O gauge. And these style of buffer stops are available in double O and N gauge in kit form too. They're one of the easiest kits to put together. You don't really need many tools either. And I'll show you just how easy they are. I have one here in front of me. I'll just get the parts for this out. And I don't even have a cutting mat here today, so I don't particularly need any of the extras. And you'll see four parts, sorry, five parts here. And all we do then is just make sure these slot together. So you can see exactly how they slot together there. You can put glue on these if you wish. I would recommend adding a bit of glue to them just to make sure they are secure. And of course, if you do have a cutting mat to hand, do carry out your modeling on a cutting mat. But as we're using no tools today, there's no real need to do that. And again, these are fantastic to do a bit of painting on, should you wish to add some further details there too. But for the ease of use, we have just slotted that together in around 30 seconds or so. You'll see there that it's got the holes to sit into the track. And that is then set up and ready to go. So it will be a little flimsy until that sits on the inside of your track there too. But once it's secure with the clips on the bottom again, you can add a little bit of glue if you're putting it down permanently, but you will find as per our Hornby buffer stop before that you can wiggle that around a bit and that should not come, come loose at all once it is clipped in there. If you're building these up, I would recommend putting a little bit of super glue on. And as ever, if you are putting super glue on, my top tip as always is to use a little bit of glue on a cocktail stick and just apply that to where the parts join in less is more, essentially. Make sure you're not putting too much glue on there, but you will get a really solid connection to build up something like this, as you can see on the screen. So as a couple of you have noticed, that's slightly larger than the others. That is one of the O-gauge buffer stops that we have here today. I just thought I'd show you something that you could see a little bit closer. We do have many different buffer stops available, as you can see, covering lots of different scales. And if you want to see more, do head over to the link in the description. If you're looking for a bit more of a complex kit, I'll just move that out of the way. We do have the SL41 kit. Again, this is something that's replicated in quite a few of the different scales. This is a more substantial sleeper built buffer stop. So not built from rails, but instead built from railway sleepers, which are more commonly used under the track. This would be a great buffer stop on a heavy goods yard. So the contents of this would be fantastic at absorbing any shocks from any runaway vehicles on the sidings there. This is a really easy kit to put together and you can find out more on how to do this on our Making Plastic Kits video, which you can find on either our YouTube or Facebook pages. But just to show you the elements, it's a very small number of plastic sprues that we have here. And this is a really great kit for beginners if you are thinking about making a plastic kit for the first time and knocking my display over in the process this is one that i would recommend for you i'll just leave those there so you can see them just while i rebuild my buffer stop display on the top there and i'll make sure that stays there hopefully for the rest of the stream but you can see here that these come on two different plastic sprues just some cuts and a little bit of glue on the joins on the back will join these together. It's a very easy kit to make. And as they say, here's one I prepared earlier. So this has been put together. You can see there that all this does is again clips to the bottom of the track. 
and that will sit there completely securely on your track piece as it has done with the buffer stop there too. So I'll put that back on the straight piece. Again, if you want to add a very small amount of glue to this, you're more than welcome to. But at the same time, it's not a full recommendation that you do do so. Just to show you a couple of the different parts I've got here, you'll notice that this buffer stop comes right up to the end of the rails and covers them, whereas this buffer stop has a short length of rail behind it. That is commonplace for most sidings in that these rail-built buffer stops will have a small amount of overflow, maybe around four to six feet or so in real life behind them, just to act as more of the shock-absorbing area if something hits them at high speed, whereas the sleeper-built buffer stops will form the end of your railways. Again, have a look at prototype pictures out there, especially if you're modeling a real life location. As, as we know in model railways and in real railways, that can change quite a bit, depending on where and when you are modeling. But the general rule is if you've got one of the rail built buffer stops, leave a little gap behind it if you're going for authenticity. If it's one of the sleeper built buffer stops, put it right at the end of your track. And again, that will clip there in full. Something else I want to show you is some of the super detail buffer stops like we have here from Acura Scale. Now, these are more of a modern design called the Rawway buffer stops. These were introduced in the 1970s and 1980s. So you'll see that they're a more substantial build than our rail built buffer stops, as you can see there. But they do fit to the track in exactly the same way. So this is one again, I've just clipped on to our track piece there. I'll try and get you a little bit more of a closer up. And you can see that that sits on the track very easily indeed. And putting this one on too, you can see there again that these sit on the track, absolutely no issues whatsoever. Just a quick clip and that is then in place. These gray boxes on here are coupling sockets for more modern multiple units. This is known as a Scharfenberg coupler, and it is found on a lot of modern trains in the UK, including the Sprinter units, the Pacer units, and some more of the modern Turbo Star units too. What will happen then is a lot of units, when they're being stabled, will actually couple up to the buffer stop, and that will act as an additional brake for that unit to make sure that unit is not going anywhere in particular. It's not something you find too often on the older buffer stops, but more and more of the modern buffer stops do have these installed. The other thing they have installed, which comes with the Acura scale buffer stops, is the detection pads and the rumble strips. Now, these again act as additional brakes, giving a bit more resistance when coming up to the buffer stops and will slow a train before they actually impact the buffer stop. One of the most important parts of a buffer stop is to stop any trains that are running away towards it before they cause any damage to buildings, platforms, people, etc. behind them. And these act as shock absorbers, but also the rumble strips, as they're known, on the track can lessen the speed of a runaway item of rolling stock heading towards them too. So these are really easy to put on. You can pick them up both with and without that coupling socket, dependent on your location. And whilst you don't see so many of the rail built buffer stops anymore, you certainly do see a lot of these more modern style buffer stops out there on today's railways. So again, if you're modeling the modern era, they're the ones to have a look at. If you're looking at something more classic, head back towards the rail built buffer stops and the sleeper built buffer stops that we see here. So one last thing I want to show you today, it doesn't look much at all, but it really is impressive once we get it working. This, I'll just head you over to the screen there, is a buffer stop light. And you'll find again on a lot of more modern railways, but certainly back in the steam era too, you'll see that these had several different ways of having a light behind them, whether it's the lamp on the design that we see here first, or whether it is a more modern LED light. These are fantastic if you are shunting in the dark or if you are running a railway in the dark or at night time and you're not quite sure where the end of the line is. And indeed, it wasn't too easy to see a black buffer stop on a black night. 
you can install these lights and they were quite commonplace across the network. You certainly see them a lot more often now in carriage stabling sidings, multiple unit stabling sidings and other places too. And of course, the most important thing, these do light up on your model railway. These are from Train Tech. You can see the O gauge version here, but this is the double O version. And again, these are absolutely one of the easiest things to install in your layout. You need no tools whatsoever. You just need to be able to pop them in. So you'll see there's two connectors there where it will pick up the power on the end. Just putting that in where we want it. I'll put it a little further down. And just sliding that in so it contacts both sides of the rails. Again, if you want to add a bit of glue to this, you're more than welcome to, but as we can see there, it doesn't need it at all. Once we turn on a bit of power, you can just about see there that that is lighting up. I'll try and bring it a little closer to the camera. That does light up with a red light. Unfortunately, it's not coming up too great on the screen, but you can see there the bottom LED is lighting up and that does light up with an appropriate red light. You just about see it there. Actually, if I put my hand behind it, you can see that that is turning on and turning off. And you can see some high definition photos of those lighting up and turning off on our website, too. So these will be located behind the actual buffer stops to act as a light. So then you can incorporate these with your chosen model of buffer stop. I'm just using Hornby's here as an example. And you can see there then that not only now do we have our buffer stop, we have our warning light behind it too. So again, absolutely no tools required there at all. We've put those just straight on by clipping them on and they are compatible again with all of the buffer stops that we have seen in our session today. So really helpful for a 24 seven operated railway and they look fantastic. It's a really easy way to add some lights onto your layout too. I'll just show you again the image there. It shows those LEDs working a lot better there. And Phillips asked a fantastic question there too, whether we can use these on analog or digital. You can indeed, Philip, you certainly can do. Now, if you're using them on dig digital, both of the LEDs will light permanently when you have power going to your track. If you're using them on an analog setup, the bottom LED will light up when you put power to that particular part of the track. So you can use them on both. You don't need any additional decoders, any additional work. They go straight on there. They just operate slightly differently whether you are using them on analog or digital. Now, a couple of questions there again in the chat asking regarding the older lights. Some fantastic questions coming through today, guys. Thank you. And Robot Monkey there asking too, can you get some oil lamp versions? Now, these are available at the time of recording on pre-order. So I've not got one here in front of me to show you, but these are the DCC Concepts rail buffers. These come with the small board, circuit boards there to allow for a flickering oil lamp effect on your layout these can be installed again onto an analog or a digital operation at your preference and you can see there that these have got the separate wires for the pickup so you do need to solder these in whether you solder them directly into your track for a pickup or whether you solder them into the circuit board to have the authentic flickering lights on there too so that is the lit versions of the lamps and again, you can find out more, more about those. They're about £16 for a pair at the moment. And if you head over to a link in the description, you'll find more information on those lit examples. But it's really easy to add some of these details to your railways, whether you're building the kit as we started there. It's still a little flimsy, but once I've put the glue on it and it'll be together, that will be perfect to sit on our O-gauge track. And of course, the many options that are able to be used straight out of the packet, whether you're looking at the super detail, the Cura scale modern buffer stops or some of the more traditional sleeper built and clip on buffer stops too. There's some great options for you there, whether you're looking at different budgets or whether you're looking at different eras. And of course, if you want to add some of the lighting effects, as you can see here, this is perfectly possible too. 
with these lights available in N-Gage, Double O and O-Gage 2. And the skills are pretty much the same. I've shown you on Double O Gauge mainly today, but exactly how these lights go on is the same whether you are an O Gauge or an N Gauge or even a HO Gauge modeler. So there's really not a lot of skill needed to enhance the ends of your tracks with lights, with buffer stops and getting some great detail in there too. So I hope you've enjoyed today's session. I hope you've learned a little bit more on just how easy it is to add buffer stops and buffer lights onto your layouts. All the items I've shown here today, whether it's the lights, the track, the buffer stops themselves, are available right now on our website. So feel free to head over to hattons.co.uk or pop over to the link in the description, which will take you straight to the buffer stops on our website. If you have enjoyed this session, do sign up to our YouTube page and like our Facebook page too. There's a lot more skills cast sessions there covering the basics you need to know to get started on your model railway adventure. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Take care.